I've traveled 8,000 miles, researched, played through countless games to dig up the most obscure Pokemon facts I could find for this video. I can guarantee you are about to see at least something in Pokemon you have never seen before. You may have noticed I tend to cover more facts and oddities in the older, more analog Pokemon games. There's something about old media, media that is crafted in a way that feels like it suits you. And if I'm gonna sell out, I'm gonna do it right with this video's sponsor, Holzkern. I like to click buttons, spin the knobs. That tactile feel is what I like in my games, in my cameras, and in my life. And why not on my wrist? Holzkern is about a slower pace. A focus on craftsmanship over anything else. Holzkern isn't just a steel type either. It's a grass type. Hell, it's a rock type too. Holzkern watches are made from wood and stone. FSC certified, no deforestation. They started with watches in 2016, but now have an array of jewelry, sunglasses, and handbags with free worldwide express shipping from Vienna. To me, Holzkern is a reminder to flip on the Game Boy instead of the phone. Life is not a race, but the Holzkern Black Friday sale is. Buy two, get one free is going on this week. Accessories too. Check the pinned comment and link in the description to check them out. Thank you Holzkern for supporting the channel, and now back to the video. Black and White 2 introduced two moves exclusive to the fusion forms of Kyurem, Zekrom, and Reshiram. These moves are Free Shock and Ice Burn. Although these moves made their debut in Black and White 2, technically speaking, this isn't actually true. Because these games could communicate and trade with the original Black and White, and you could theoretically trade a Pokemon containing these moves into Black and White, that means that these moves existed since the release of Gen 5, but were just entirely hidden. If we take a Pokemon that knows these moves and attempt to use them in the original Black and White, we can see something very interesting. It seems that because they weren't planned to ever be in this game, they were still working on finalizing their animations, given that they are slightly different than how they look in the final Black and White 2. When we take a look at them side by side, you can definitely tell a difference. I think this is a cool instance where a pretty interesting thing was just out of reach, and I bet very few players have ever actually seen the original animations for these pretty classic moves. Back in the day, it was normal for a Pokemon game to release in Japan at least a year before it ever came to the US. Many kids in the late and early 2000s grew up with the game Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2. But in Japan, the history of Pokemon Stadium is vastly different. You see, there is not actually two, but three Pokemon Stadium games in Japan. That's right, they have an extra entry in this series that never saw a release in America at all. In Japan, Pokemon Stadium 2 is technically Pokemon Stadium 3, and Pokemon Stadium is Pokemon Stadium 2. The missing game has gained the fan name of Pokemon Stadium Zero. The game came out on August 1st of 1998, which was exactly one month before the North American debut of Pokemon Red and Blue. The fact that this game came out before anyone in the West even knew what Pokemon was is probably why it's so incredibly obscure. Pokemon Stadium Zero had an extremely limited roster of Pokemon, only allowing you to choose from a pool of 42, leaving out a lot of unevolved and middle evolution Pokemon. The way the actual game functioned itself was also kind of different. In order to do anything other than battle, you had to have a Game Boy game saved at the Pokemon Center and connected via the transfer pack to even play it all. Apparently they did plan to add the rest of the Pokemon with an expansion through the 64DD, but due to delays they released Pokemon Stadium 2 instead, or what we know as Pokemon Stadium 1. Let's see. One Stadium, one Stadium 2, which is Pokemon Stadium 1. And then Pocket Monster Stadium Gold and Silver, which is Pokemon Stadium 2. So three games. But now it's kind of just a weird mark on Pokemon's release history that has been pretty forgotten about. An interesting oddity can be seen in Heart Gold and Soul Silver in Cherry Grove City. When you return to this early game town with Surf, you can access this small patch of water technically on Route 30. But if you walk up to Route 30 and surf to the south, 
you can see the location tag rolls over to Cherry Grove City. This might seem normal, but it's when we encounter a Pokemon when we see an oddity here. In the top half of this pond, we can encounter Poliwag and Poliwhirl, but when we surf to the south end and find a Pokemon, the encounter is rolled as if you are in the ocean west of Cherry Grove, a strange case where two different tile sets of Pokemon occur in the same body of water. This is not a very popular occurrence in the game. This is a quick one, but it's really funny. We all probably know about the Friday Drifloon in Valley Windworks. It's a little Drifloon who appears in the overworld on Fridays in the Sinnoh games. It's a small encounter and has no story significance, although it kind of does. If you're playing through the story of Diamond and Pearl and reach the summit of Mount Cornet, where the climax of the story occurs, you might remember a scene where the sky is covered in these colors and it flashes to scenes of the map including the Valley Windworks. If you complete the story on Friday with the Drifloon spawned, it's possible to see the Drifloon floating there just for a second when the camera flashes to it during this cutscene. It's so short, but to me this is really cool. What's better is that this is even possible in the remakes as well, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, in full, short, high definition. One of my favorite Pokemon facts to find is when Pokemon things are hidden in other streams of media, like the hidden Pikachu in Osmosis Jones. But recently, I stumbled upon something neat in the 2011 game Catherine. The game isn't affiliated with Pokemon in any way really to my knowledge, so it would come to a surprise that there is an unused music track in the files that bears striking resemblance to the Diamond and Pearl battle theme, and is thought to be a rendition of it although not present in normal gameplay. Take a listen. If you are someone who has spent many hours playing Black and White 2, you may know that shiny sparkles are not the only kind of sparkle effect you can have on a Pokemon. There are actually three different shiny-like effects you can have in this game. One, of course, is shiny Pokemon. The second one is the star animation you can receive by beating a Pokestar Studios movie and getting the strange ending. The star looks like this. You've probably seen this. But there's one more that can affect a Pokemon. In order to achieve this final sparkle, you need to have first beaten Pokemon Black and White completely. Then once you start Black and White 2, you need to activate the Memory Link feature. After this, N's Pokemon that he used throughout the story of Black and White will appear in the wild at a 1% rate throughout the map of Black and White 2. When you encounter one, it will have a special sparkle that looks like this. But here's the thing. Let's say you have a shiny Pokemon, and you use this shiny in Pokestar Studios and get the strange ending, giving your Pokemon the star animation. The star animation will actually replace your Pokemon's shiny sparkles forever. You will now have a shiny that doesn't sparkle like normal. But the question is, where do N's Pokemon fit into all of this? If we hack the game to make this Pokemon, N's Wild Pokemon, a shiny, will N's Sparkles play or the shinies? Let's find out. After testing this, I think we found probably the coolest solution. Interestingly, the shiny Sparkles and N Sparkles will play over each other. It looks super cool in game, and I've never really seen this before. It's a shame that N's Pokemon can't be shiny, otherwise this would be really cool to have in game legitimately. One of my favorite areas of obscure Pokemon trivia is the fact that sometimes two Pokemon will be linked together by purely their design and their canon lore. I'll give you an example for what I mean. We all know Zangoose and Saviper, two Pokemon pitted against each other. But even less people know Miltank and Tauros, with their same base stat total, spawning on the same routes, being based on the same real life animal. But one you may have really missed is Trubbish and Mincino. Mincino's motif is that it uses its tail as a broom and mops and loves to clean things. It prefers cleaner habitats and is obsessively tidying its area, according to the Pokedex. Which seems like a one-off comment, like the Pokedex usually does, until you realize that that totally makes sense when you look at the spawn rates of Mancino. 
Mancino of course spawns next to the recycling plant in Sun and Moon, and in its home game, you can see that its spawns almost completely overlap with Trubbish, the trash Pokemon, who according to its Pokedex entry, prefers unsanitary places, implying wherever Trubbish goes, Mancino will follow and be there to clean and tidy up the area. I just think this is a cute detail that not many people know about, and I love when Pokemon does this. I stumbled across a Japanese article about game design with a few critical team members at Game Freak attending, where they went in depth about a mechanic that I frankly had no idea existed in Scarlet and Violet, called the Meow System. It all started when a programmer, Kitamura, decided to head to the mountains and nearby zoos to study how animals made sounds throughout the day and night. They found that at night, many medium-sized mammals don't make any sounds at all. Instead, all you can hear at night are bugs. As implied, they took the time to implement this truth into the game. The interview provided some behind-the-scenes photos where you can see this feature in use. As the morning comes, you'll hear more birds, but this isn't even the extent of it. During their tests, they also noted the way birds talk in real life with one another and developed a system in tandem with the Meow system that causes one bird Pokemon to respond with a call when another Pokemon is affected by the Meow system and calls, like a call and response. They also talk about how they gave every single Pokemon a secret type, if you would call it that, that relates to when, if, and how they cry. Crazy. Some shiny Pokemon are so rare, so elusive, that they are practically no longer even possible to find. Today, I'm going to break open the case of a long-lost shiny Arceus. In 2015, to coincide with the movie, the Pokemon Company hosted a distribution event for Arceus that lasted about three months. This event was exclusive to Japan, and the only way to receive an Arceus was to pre-order a ticket to the upcoming movie. Once your ticket was pre-ordered, you would receive a code you could redeem for one single Arceus. The Arceus you received was entirely random. There were 20 different versions you could get. 19 of them were simply Arceus holding one of the random element plates and sometimes a silk scarf. But during this event, there was a special 20th form, a shiny Arceus, holding the silk scarf. You could tell this Arceus apart from its original trainer, which was Dahara City, the setting of the Pokemon movie it was an advertisement for. Unlike many other events, you could redeem as many codes as you wanted through this and receive an Arceus, although you'd have to pre-order a ticket every single time so it wasn't cheap. Those who were lucky enough to hit that 1 out of 20 chance are now owners of an impossible to obtain shiny. Once the event was over by mid-August, even if you found a code, the codes would no longer work. The event for the Dahara City Arceus would later pop up again in Japan and Taiwan at the end of the year in early December. But strangely, the shiny Arceus was removed from the event entirely. So if you happen to buy a Japanese cartridge and stumble upon a golden Arceus from Dahara City, you have found a rare relic of a shiny Pokemon that has been entirely lost to time and is probably one of very few. 